well. Welcome back, boils and ghouls, to the dark forest. I hope you brought your flashlights with you along with some snacks. Stay close to the fire for safety. And let's get spooky. I work in security up in northern Pennsylvania. I work at this old insane asylum that has been shut down for more than a couple decades. I don't know why they keep this place occupied with security, but hey, it pays the bills. We do our check-ins and check-outs with construction sites and people of some type of real estate, and I make my rounds to make sure that nobody's trying to sneak in. We've had some weird teenagers go in and try to vandalize the place, spray paint, breaking windows, and just damaging property. There have been the occurrences where the occult, some devil-worshipping people have been in here and doing some type of ritualistic crap in here. We try to bust them and arrest them as quickly as possible, but most of the time, they get away. With our company, there's always a two-man team for the morning shift swing shift, and the night shift. And yep, you guessed it. I worked on the night shift along with Phil. We've grown to be good friends over the past couple of years of being assigned to this location. Every hour, we would just rotate on who would stay back with the walkie-talkie and who would make the rounds through the first level and around the outside of the building. We didn't bother going to the other floors below or above because if nobody's on the main level, if we don't see any break-ins, then most likely there's nobody there. Hopefully. Technically, we're supposed to walk the entire building on every single floor, including the basement. But, over time, you just learn how to wing things. Well, it was 3 a.m., and it was my time to make the rounds on foot. Phil handed me the walkie-talkie, and I began my walk. I was walking around on the first level, just minding my business, just looking around casually with my flashlight, checking inside the rooms from my left, then on my right, casually making sure that all the rooms are still and completely empty. Hey! I stopped in my tracks and just looked around. Hello? Who's here? Silence. I got no response. I swear if it's some punk-ass teenagers, I'm gonna frickin' flip, I told myself. I circled the area with my flashlight, still trying to figure out where I heard that voice from. It echoed through the whole hallway. I had no clue where it actually came from. Until I saw the door that led down to the basement. Down here. That's what it said. Was somebody stuck down there? Is there somebody in trouble? No. It couldn't be. I walked over to the door and turned the knob. It was unbearably cold, believe it or not. It was a nice chilly night, but the doorknob was as cold as ice. I slowly turned the knob and opened the door. I stopped at the main entrance and just listened hard. For the first few seconds, it was completely silent as it should be. Then, somewhere off in the distance downstairs, I heard the sound of static, like it was coming from somewhere on a television down below. I slowly walked down the steps to the basement level.
as soon as I reached the ground level in the basement. There was only one option for me to go. It was to my right. As I made that right hand turn, I started walking down the hallway and I swear I could see some type of illumination down the ways on the right hand side. Like there was a light in one of the rooms further down. I reached for my walkie-talkie and radioed in to my bud. Uh, hey Phil, you in? Yep. What's going on over there? I was just making my rounds on the main level, and I started hearing these voices of saying to come down here or something like that. I don't know if someone's making a prank if there's somebody on the property, but I happen to be right next to the door that led down to the basement. I'm just letting you know, I'm down here in the basement now, and I'm seeing some illuminating lights somewhere down on the hallway. I don't know if there's any power still left on in this building. I thought everything was shut off. But I'm gonna go check it out and I'll let you know what I find. You don't say. Alright, well just keep me in the loop and let me know if you need backup or something like that. I'll be here at the office. So I'm walking down this hallway in the basement, right? Checking the rooms, one by one. Most of the doors are already unlocked and opened. I was just looking through with my flashlight as usual. As I continued walking, that light was indeed a light, and it was getting brighter the more I walked down the hall. I could see which room it was coming from now. It was the radiation room. At this point, I thought it was some stupid teenager, so I turned off my flashlight in total darkness now, but I crept along the wall towards the light of that radiology room. I figured I would just pop in there at the moment of surprise and get him. When I reached the door, I took a deep breath and swung my body into the doorway, only to see a hospital chair with an old-fashioned television on facing me. First it was static, and then... Oh, so. Uh, no, one the... More about gel coat. When the fourth round would... Don't you call in the... I turned out of there and ran back over towards the door that led up to the main level as quickly as I possibly could. I don't know what the hell that was, but something was controlling that television. I ran back up the steps at Olympic time, ran all the way back to our main security guard office where Phil was, and I was completely out of breath, shaking in my boots. I was so incredibly scared, it literally took me over 15 minutes to even calm down to even speak to him clearly. I've heard the rumors, but this was the first and only experience I wanted to deal with. I never made another round that night, and I resigned the following morning. I'm a retired janitor over in San Diego, California at the VA hospital down by La Jolla. I can't tell you how many times that I saw shadows around corners late at night, or the time I heard the voices coming from the air conditioning vent system on the third floor. I have never been physically assaulted. Everything's just been noises and flickering lights and cold spots in certain rooms that I happen to be cleaning in. I've been working at this hospital since the late 70s, even though its opening was in 1969. I feel like I've been there ever since it's been there. I know every corner, every exit, every single floor. I know that there's a lot of life, but also a lot of death when it comes to any hospital. And with death, that brings superstition, skeptics, and the paranormal, whether you believe in it or not. 
it's there. Late at night, I would be mopping hallways and casually seeing some empty wheelchair down the hallway, moving along on its wheels all by itself. As soon as I would glance at it, it would come to a halt. Now mind you, this wasn't an everyday occurrence but I've seen my fair share over the past 15 years. I've been retired for quite some time, but I wanted to express my individual sightings per se, and just to get it off my chest, hoping that somebody out there would believe me. I'm a night shift nurse over at the Cleveland Clinic Lutheran Hospital in Cleveland, Ohio. My experience is 100% true, and I want to just get it out there to the public. I just know that I can't be the only person who has witnessed these type of events. This happened a couple weeks ago. I believe it was on a Sunday evening. Well... Monday morning, technically. Let me rewind a bit. I'm a 35-year-old single-parent female. I have a 10-year-old son named Josh. The first occurrence was a folded piece of white paper that was left on my keyboard on my computer desk at the station. I just casually sat down and grabbed it and opened it up. Inside this little folded paper were two words. I'm sorry. That was it. There was nothing else written on the paper. I asked the other nurses if somebody was just messing with me or if it was dropped off by somebody, but nobody said they saw anyone go by my computer desk. So I just threw it away. I finished typing up my report that I was starting on. About 20 or so minutes later, I started to make my rounds, as I usually do. The phone rings at the nurse's station. One of my colleagues answers the phone. I pay it no mind. I'm just giving some medication to one of our patients. My colleague leans over the counter to me. Sarah! It's for you. For me? At this hour? Who is it? I... I didn't ask. Just put him on hold. I'll be right there. I finish up what I'm doing with my patient, and I walk back over to the nurse's station. I grab the phone from my coworker and place it against my ear. This is Sarah. Silence. Then I hear a distinct voice. I'm... I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Sarah. I hung up the phone in confusion. Sorry for what? Who was that? Hey Jen, is there a way that we could get a callback number for whoever just called in right now? When they checked, the call was unknown. There was no way for me to call back who, whoever was calling me on the other line. The weirdest part about it though was that that voice sounded vaguely familiar. I typed up a couple of more reports, but still, that phone call was on the back of my mind. I finished wrapping everything up on the computer at the moment, and I went to go have a cigarette break. I know, go figure. A nurse smoking, right? I should know better, but hell, it's been a habit I've had for about 20 years. I wrap up my cigarette and I head back to the station. 
once I arrive? There's another folded piece of paper laying on the top of my keyboard again. This time, I don't even sit down. I just reach for the paper and open it standing up. Again, it read, I'm sorry, Sarah. I asked everybody again, Alright, what's going on, guys? Who's sorry for what? Everybody shook their head. They didn't know what I was talking about. And yet, no one has seen anyone put this paper again on my keyboard. Now I'm starting to get irritated. I don't like questions that I can't get answers for. It just gives me a headache. My mind starts to wander, and I reach down by my purse to grab my cell phone to text my son to make sure that he's about to go to sleep. It's a school night, and I want to make sure he's in bed. As I reached for my phone and pulled it closer, I noticed I had one new text message. I swiped the screen open to read it, and gasped. It was a text from a blocked number that read, I'm so sorry, Sarah. Now, I'm starting to get totally creeped out. Because whoever is leaving me these little creepy love notes also has my personal cell phone number, which is totally inappropriate. I was destined to get to the bottom of it. I figured I would catch whoever this was and raise hell. So, I acted like everything was kosher and I paid it no mind. I didn't even respond to the text. I simply put my cell phone back into my purse and casually walked over to one of the rooms that was about three spots away from the nursing station. I just pretended to be occupied in dealing with the patient or writing some paperwork, I forgot exactly what I was doing at the time, but I was definitely paying attention to the nursing station. Whoever was leaving those notes on my keyboard was gonna get it. So, I just pretended and waited. I swear, I must have pretended to be working for at least 20 to 30 minutes before giving up and walking back over to the nursing station. I knew that there was a couple other patients that I haven't seen yet tonight that were admitted earlier in that day before my shift started. As I walked back over to my computer to grab my folder, there was another piece of paper there waiting for me. And this time, I watched the station the whole time. Nobody walked by my computer. I grabbed it and opened it up, not knowing how in the world that even got there when there was nobody around? This time, it read, Please, forgive me. God, so weird. Forgive who for what? I said to myself. I shook my head and again crumpled it up into the trash can. I was approaching the new patient that was admitted right before my shift started. That's when I heard the noise coming from inside the room. It was an emergency. I rushed inside to a familiar looking face. Tanya. I didn't even know she was here. She was dead. And at the small little roller table to her left, there was a small white pad of paper there with a pencil. Her eyes were open and lifeless, and yet I could see a tear running down the right side of her cheek. You see, Tanya was the reason why my marriage failed. She was my ex-best friend whom my husband was having an affair with. I haven't seen her in years. I read a report that she had gotten into some kind of car accident. 
Yes. I forgive you. Well, I hope that you all enjoyed the three true terrifying hospital ghost stories tonight. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Share me with your friends. And spread me like butter. Have a good night.